Welcome to one of the biggest Mighty Car Mods episodes of all time. You are in for a treat as we bring out every single car from the entire Mighty Car Mods collection and attempt to modify them all in just one day. And speaking of all the Mighty Car Mods cars, we have the Cars and Mighty Car Mods Ultimate Edition and yes, you can get it. Yes, it's in Australia and ready to be sent out. This is a book that we have been working on for years and years and years. It features all of our favourite cars from the show. There's QR codes, there's a whole section at the back which has got secret cars that nobody's seen yet and yes, we ship these anywhere in the world and if you click on the link down below and it says they're available or pre-ordered, it means that you definitely will secure one and we will autograph it for you and send it to your door. If it says sold out, they're all gone. But if you click and it says you can get one, then you're in luck. So grab them and we will be shipping those now. Martin, without it's further ado... It's time, let's do it. It's time to rip some massive skids. There's going to be shed There's skids be today. Skids. But what vehicles are we going to start with? Martin, we, we're going to start Eco and get... And more and more crazy. We're gonna we're gonna add more wheels as the day oh, goes let's on. Go. All right, enjoy. I'm gonna change my clothes too. Whoa. Welcome to another episode of Mighty Car Mods. Today we're pretty much bringing you people all of our vehicles. They're all gonna be coming up. There's lots of little jobs that need to be doing, and just we just thought we'd take you with us. So some of these jobs are too small to make a whole video about, but we know there's a lot of interest in all these various vehicles, seeing where they're up to, getting a bit of an update. So we'll update you, and if there's little small mods we're gonna do along the way, we're gonna do them also. Are you doing a sick Martin, burnout? I'm doing a sick burnout, and now... Oh, stop it. Actual circle work. Actual circle work. Can you do one as well, Martin? I'm gonna try. Mine's got this kickstart thing, so... Oh, yeah, here we go. Here we go. Oh. Yeah, two-wheel drive, dude. Oh, yours is all-wheel drive. two-wheel drive, all-wheel drive in this case. Dude, that's freaking awesome. Whoa, sorry. Did I, I didn't need that ankle anyway. Did that hurt? Let's get the first job done. Are you ready? Yep, go. Here we go. All right, first yes. job, fixing up our mad posties. Marty, how's yours doing? This is my uh, turbocharged Super Cub. It's a Honda, and yes, it fits. Uh, this is a turbocharger from eBay, the cheapest and smallest one in the world. We put an intercooler from a mirror on it. We put a posty spec blow off valve on it, and we put this mad exhaust, like a full dump exhaust on it. But I realized that I just wanted a little bit more quietness. So what I've done is got myself from eBay the cheapest exhaust you can buy, a little muffler, and I'm just going to weld that on. That's and that's going to make this better in every way. Well, Martin, this here is a naturally aspirated posty. Uh, Marty rebuilt the carby on it. Now it uh, uh, doesn't work. So I tried. I, I bought I may um, have left stuff out from of eBay. Here's the thing. You can buy a rebuild kit for like $10 or $15. Or for twenty dollars, <laughs> you can build, you can buy, sorry, a built carby that's already specifically set up, already ready to go, that's brand new for this bike. So, so good. I'm going to be installing that today. Um, let's get to it, man. You've probably worked out by now that I absolutely love this posty bike, so I'm super keen to get it running properly again. And then we're going to be taking you through the biggest modification video we've ever done as we work our way through the entire fleet of MCM cars in this massive video. It's going to be freaking huge. Pit bike parts are cheap and plentiful, so I grabbed this muffler off eBay for about 20 bucks. It slips straight onto the existing pipe, so while my friend replaces the carby I broke, all I have to do is cut the existing pipe down and slide the new muffler into place. The muffler looks like a fish. The old carby is coming out, now it's time to check out the new one. Alright, so here's the old carby, which is currently um, making the bike run a little bit rubbish. And I'm about to replace it with that one. Uh, so this is a Japanese one, this is a Chinese one. So this is a, um, this one actually says Japan on it, and this one says Kike Hinked. I don't know what kike well, hint it's, means. It's supposed to say K-hin, which is the Japanese one. Oh, really? Yeah, well, it doesn't. <laughs> yep. It's like the old phony Sony thing. Anyway, hopefully it works. I'm gonna put it in and uh, see what happens. The moment of truth, everybody. Let's see if it's uh, let's see if it's fixed. 
Sounding good so far. <laughs> yes! We're back. Just works, man, perfectly. Is that on the choke as well? That's no choke. Amazing. Perfect idle. Oh, stoked. Dude, that's done. You ready? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, really? Hold the back down, yeah. Hold the back up or down? Uh, we'll just sit whatever we need, dude. All right. <laughs> Bogans. Actually, can you just move those tools there, Martin? I'm going to show the people how to do an, a mad wheelie on their posty bike at home. This could go so wrong. No, it'll be fine. We'll be fine. You ready? <laughs> You almost ate shit so bad. <laughs> Hectic mono skills, dude. Thanks, man. It's awesome. All right, should we start her up? Yeah, yeah. Here we go. Let's go. Mad. Oh, it sounds good. It sounds good. It sounds like a muted turbo beast. Yeah. I love it. it sounds That's great. Awesome. The blow off valve needs a stronger spring in it, because otherwise it makes this noise. Because it's the actual diaphragm, they're just bouncing back and forth because single cylinder. Yeah. So yeah. With our first mods of the day successfully completed, it's time to celebrate with a synchronized shed skid. With the CT110 Posty Bike and the Super Cub now successfully modified, we're quickly moving on to my Honda CT125. Now there is a full build of this bike upcoming, so for today, we're just installing some Mighty Car Mods valve caps. And with that done, now we're bringing in the next two nuggets. <laughs> I love this thing. The two best cars in the fleet. Oh man. Doesn't matter what anyone says, this is yeah. this is what it's actually all about. So good. I love this thing. I love driving, I love the sounds of it, I love the look of it. I can't believe it's bigger than a mini though. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not used to seeing them side by side like that. This car has pretty much continued to be absolutely perfect. Look at that oh. V16B just crammed in there. Look at it, it's absolutely amazing. So now, good. The car's been reliable, runs great, awesome, runs on a Haltec Elite. So there's a couple of little things that I need to do today. The main one is this car has a variable exhaust, so a valve that opens and closes. Well, it's meant to, but it doesn't work anymore, so it's stuck, so I need to investigate that. Just gonna give it a bit of a clean. What about you, Marty? Uh, I've mostly interior stuff, actually. Um, I got a head unit for it that fits, so I don't have to hack up the dash because I don't know, rare JDM dash hackery, even though it's a little nugget. So I've got a head unit that fits, so I'm gonna investigate and see if I can make that work or at least work out how to make it work. All right, so this is a singled in fold out head unit. These are really popular back in the show car days because fold out was just the rage. I really like doubled in head units. I think they work well, especially ones that don't have the mechanism in the back because I mean, who really uses CDs these days? But you can also buy the fold out ones like this. And the reason I'm doing that is I don't have to hack up my dash because it's only got, which is a bit old school 90s, it's only got two single dins stacked on top of each other. Um, but this will fit really well. They're a bit heavy, so like some bracing is probably gonna be required. But I like that because single din, fold out, and has CarPlay, which means you can plug it in with your modern iPhone or Android or whatever and get your maps and all the stuff on there that's sort of most important these days. Can someone answer me this? Why do they still give you remote controls with your head unit? I understand if you're in like a Winnebago, an RV, one of those kind of things, but in a mirror, like, I, I can reach everything. So what, what are these for? I can tell you why, Martin. Why? For backseat control. No. It is, it's true. It's true. It's Where? so you can change the tunes on and you can put Chicago on when you're in the back seat. Chicago, is that the, is that the one to use? I, it, Never fails? It could be for someone. Allegedly. It's been reported that Chicago never fails. Yeah. How deep is your love? Is that them? Yeah. I don't know what works when you're with another person though. <laughs> but if you're by yourself in the back seat, you're destined to win. 
Before I jump into the engine bay, I'm giving the Mini a proper wash, and we have got a full video on our channel showing you exactly how to wash your car. So now we'll cut to some overly epic slow motion shots of the car getting cleaned, and then we'll go back inside to check in on Marty with his stereo install. Installing a stereo is one of my favourite jobs and one of the things that got me into modifying cars in the first place. You have to have mad tunes when you're cruising around and the mirror has been silent for way too long. The install is super easy. Battery, switch power, ground, speakers and you're done. So there's one thing that I actually never had a chance to do and every time I look at this engine bay I want to do it and that is to repaint the rocker cover. We've made a whole video on how to do that if you want to check it out so you can click the thing or I'll leave the description down below but I'm going to take it off give it a paint and then it's going to look freaking awesome. And it was at this point I realised we have a problem. So this engine actually went in um, from underneath and basically the car was lowered down over the top of it. I've never tried to remove the rocker cover before and uh, I now realise that it will never come off because it actually doesn't fit. And I thought maybe I could get it up on enough of an angle, but it's never going to clear this stud here. So it's, um, it's not coming off. Um, but I'm just going to mask it up and do it anyway. So my stereo is ready to go in. I can either choose the top or bottom hole. I want to go for the bottom one because then there's more room for the screen to flap up here and it's not all in the way of the heater controls. I also worked out that you actually need to measure it based off this trim because the trim actually brings it all quite a way out and there's not much room back behind there. So this can get clicked into this part like that and throw this in, plug it in and my stereo install is done. All right. Done. So stoked with that. This just looks so good. You get in, go for your cruise, turn the key. The, I love that the fuel pump primes and that comes out at the same oh, time. It's so like that just means business, doesn't it? Look at that. It's so legit. Do you remember that NSX that I drove in Japan? How many screens and weird stuff it just had I coming do. out of it everywhere? So cool. That's awesome, man. Let's stick hear your, it. Stick your tune. You, the music comes up on the screen. It's really cool. See, it's got the key to the city soundtrack. Oh, sweet. Which we'll link here because it's awesome. Um, this gentleman made in its entirety. Um, th that's the soundtrack. You can see it on the on the screen. You can see the music. And you know what I mean? Why are you being weird? I'm not being, I'm not being weird. Why can't you hear it? Why can't we hear it? Because there's no speakers. Because Why would you put a head unit in your car if you've got no speakers? Dude, look why I put it in. Do you, I don't even need to answer that question. This is why I put it in. Look at this. Look at it. Ah, oh. it's like the robot is. It's it's like the robots. You know what's happening to the robot right now because oh, so it doesn't actually work. You well, just it, wanted it to come in and out. No, it works. Look, you no, can still do maps. There's no speakers. You can still do maps and stuff on there for now. And then next time we do a video like this and we fix some stuff in our cars. I'm going to put some speakers in the doors because there is room for them. But when we fully repainted the doors and everything, all the speakers came out and the factory ones were junk anyway. Right. So that needs to be done. Put some speakers in the front. Job done. That's awesome. I'm getting my next vehicle. How are Why you going, Why don't we mate? just do speakers now? I don't have any. The rocker cover has been painted. It's going to take a couple of hours for it to dry and then to wrinkle up. So I also need to order a motor for the valve in my exhaust system and I'm going to get rid of those little remotes because they just they suck and just hardwire a switch in to open or close it. So that's it. Marty's got his head unit in the mirror. This is out of clean. It's had the exhaust investigated. That's painted. Next cars. Time for double Honda action. Oh yeah, they're both Hondas. Look at this, we got two Hondas. Uh, one of these, of course, is an overrated nugget that everyone on the internet loves and they get around on and think is kind of cool. Um, the other one is a Zuma. Uh, and um, this here is something that uh, we bought in Japan in parts. It arrived Dude. here in a crate and um, actually bought that when we did our 240Z episode um, uh, in Japan. And um, currently, this is what it sounds like. 
flat as a tack. So it doesn't work. So I'm just going to get that working and give it a little service. Yeah. Martin, you've got a yellow Honda Civic. You're, you're right. <laughs> you're remembering. I don't mind. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> yeah, this was one of the hardest projects in terms of how long it took to piece back together someone else's unfinished project. So that's the yellow Civic. And uh, I think it looks amazing, actually, as yep. well, for a Civic. Let me temper that. Uh, but uh, what did we not get around to? The only thing that didn't happen on this that needs to in the upcoming future was probably a door, door lock. I don't know. Oh, yes, it works. Well, oh, it does work now. That's one thing that needs to be uh, looked at. So, central locking. And what actually happened with this Civic, so um, I replaced the whole inside as we discussed when we drove it around uh, the racetrack. I actually replaced, got a whole other Civic and replaced the entire inside, which we should have done from the beginning. Uh, the seats have all been installed. Um, properly and the inside's looking pretty nice. The that needs a, a little clean up down there, doesn't it? A bit of a clean up, just tidy up some wiring. And the main thing this thing needs, some people would argue that they don't need it. I think this needs power steering and this particular engine combo for whatever reason with the triggering combo doesn't work with your normal hydraulic power steering. So I'm going to go electric and I'm going to use either an Astra pump. Well, that was the original plan and I actually got halfway through installing that and realised it was never going to fit. Uh, and then I found that there's a Mercedes A1 60? You know those little wedge looking things? They look like oh, they, yeah, if yeah. they're a real yes. drive, they'd go they on the back like wheel. like a piece of cheese that fell over. Yes. Yes. So you can use the power steering pump for one of them because it's electric power steering, super simple. You plug it in and away you go. So that's what's going to happen to this car. Um, it's a bit bigger job than what I'm going to do today, but at the moment I'm just going to sort of go through and catalogue what's missing. And there's a few like little things like um, guard liners. Yeah. It's cool. got no guard liners and that blows air everywhere and makes dirt and dust. So Sweet. I've got some guard liners. You can buy specific parts new. All right. So I'm going to slap them in. Nice. Cool I'm going to fix a Zuma. Guardliners prevent dirt, mud and the tears of Toyota owners that you just chopped from being splashed up into your engine bay and inside your bodywork. One of the best things about Civics is parts are everywhere and they are cheap. I got a pair of brand new Guardliners for less than 50 bucks off the internet. Hello Mark. Can I just ask what everyone's thinking? What's that? How did you get so good at making things out of bottles? Because I'm from Castle Hill. There, there, there's no shops and stuff around there, so yeah, changing oil on your motorbike and stuff like that, you would use one of these. You need to finally use one of these because there's no. That's genius. There's and no like wait, super. And then you pour you. it out through there. Of course you do, Martin. That's genius. Stop it. Stop it, Martin. The old oil doesn't look that bad, but it has been in there for a long time, and it is cheap and easy to change. If you've got a kick pedal, now's the time to give it a couple of boots, which will release some extra oil. Make sure you dispose of your old oil properly, then you can whack in some new stuff. My guard liners are being installed using a combination of cable ties and Evo 10 plastic bumper clips. OEM ones are the best, so don't bother with aftermarket ones that never fit properly. Alright, guard liners are in using some Mitsubishi Evo 10 plugs because I don't have any Honda ones and a couple of real fat cable ties. Uh, these things don't fit perfect, they're aftermarket parts, they're also really cheap uh, but it'll stop all the dirt and crud getting into the back of the guards and up under here. Uh, so yeah, that's done. Very happy with that. Wheels back on. Civic done for now. My Civic can now go back together and our other super reliable Honda is ready for a jump start. So I've changed the oil in the Zuma, I've checked the coolant, I've given it a look over, everything is in order, the battery's flat because we haven't used this bike for three and a half years, but you're about to experience why it is that Hondas have the reputation they have and why people love them. I don't love the Honda cars, but I do love the Honda bikes. And watch this, all you do, put that on that, can you hold that one on there, Martin? And this here, you on? Yep, go. Okay. Jumper back's on. Honda reliability, check this out. Is the jump pack on? Yeah. That's awesome. Just needs a kick, Martin, and some hopes and dreams. Oh yeah. We on? Yeah, dude. We're on! Amazing. There it is, everybody. Honda life, you can't argue with it. They kind of sound the same, don't they? We got quite a bit of stuff done, man. Yeah. That's good. It's all the small little things, isn't it? That you go, oh, I've got to do that job, got to do that job. I know. And, We're it, doing and them. You're, it's like not one of those things that you're like, today on Mighty Car Mods, 
We're going to paint the Rocker Cup. Wait on, we did put, do a whole episode a, on that. Put a guard liner in a Honda Civic. No, but it's awesome that it's getting done, man. It's making all the cars just that little bit better and a little bit more awesome. And there's more cars coming, Martin. Heaps more. But first we are there's not lunch. Even halfway. First there's lunch. There I've is got lunch. for you a choice of a low sugar roasted nut bar or a probiotic oat bar. That. Snack pack! What is a snack pack? <laughs> a snack pack is chips covered in kebab meat, covered in barbecue sauce, which is then covered in chili sauce, which is then covered in garlic sauce. It, it is, there is nothing, nothing tastier in this world, dude. It's hot chips covered in like juicy meat. Mm. <laughs> oh, it's tastier than tofu, legit. That lunch was grot. So, next. Well, it was good. What? It was good, man. It was grot. Oh, I liked it. Next car, 180SX, everybody. So good. The best sports car ever to come out of Japan Second or best. any country on this planet or universe. STI now, you might have seen this recently where we tried to get the Bam Bam box working. In exciting news, done some research. Today, we're actually going to get it working. We're going to no! re What? No, Bam Bam! Yes! Yes! We're going to Bam Bam the GTI. No, Bam Bam! Same engine, better car. Ooh, yeah, I said it. No, no, we're just gonna put on... Bam Bam? No, no Bam Bam. Windscreen wipers. Better for oh. performance, better for safety. Let's do it. Super easy. Car dealer service centres legit have signs that say, have you upsold wipers? And then charge you 80 bucks. Don't do it, change them yourself. They cost 10 bucks and it's easy. You might be wondering what uh, windscreen wipers and tyres have in common being that these are made by Michelin. The answer is rubber. It's just made of rubber, that's why. Okay, yes, that may all seem very obvious, but being able to see out of your car in the rain is actually a very good thing, and people often overlook it. Look at that. Full, legit, Euro style, with their little covers and things to make them all nice. So there it is, that took no time at all. It's a very simple upgrade, a modification that just took about 60 seconds, but we've got a lot of cars to get through, plus the GTIR, as we know, is already perfect. <laughs> Speaking of perfect all-wheel drive JDM legend cars, next up, here we go. K-Truck. K-Truck, so good. So good. This you, is easily the 12th best vehicle we have. Oh, for sure. It's definitely in the top 12. Uh, you would have seen this recently where we custom turbocharged it. We put an oil cooler on it. We put wheels and flares and all sorts of mad stuff on it. But there's one little thing that I did when we turbocharged it that I never got around to fixing properly. And that was I had to make a fitting because we just couldn't buy it. To Since fit then, the Bam Bam box. No Bam Bam box. No Bam Bam. Imagine your truck Bam Bam. No Bam Bam. bam. Maximum no, I don't want to ruin my exhaust. I've got a mad cut in there. Uh, so I actually went on the internet and bought some fittings. So I've got the right fitting in here to make it do what we want to do. Just going to slap that on and then no more because it's the tiniest of tiniest coolant leaks, which I have to fix. So this is a fitting that I welded together because I didn't have the right size to go from what I think. I think that's 16 mil and that's 12. And you can get T pieces that are really easy where they're all the same, but ones where they're very are harder to get. So I welded it, but there's just the tiniest of tiny pinholes in there. So you could take it apart and weld it again, but it's had cooling all through it, so it's probably not going to weld that good. So I went on the internet and you can get um, T-pieces and you can order them online where they have different sizes. So this has got, like that T-piece for example is 16 mil all round. Then there's ones you can get that are like 90 mil all round, then you can get ones that are different size off them, which was there for example, which I think this is the one I need actually. One of those ones where it's smaller coming off the T-piece, which is really handy for, for when you're hacking stuff together like this. First up, I'm gonna clamp the heater hoses so I don't lose a gutful of coolant and then remove the old T-piece and install my mad new multi-size version. Any small upgrade you can do to stop liquids leaking out of your car is well worth the effort. Cooling system no longer has a pinhole leak. It also no longer has an oil cooler, Martin. Yeah, that's right. I did a bunch of logging and I could never actually get it hot enough to make use of the oil cooler. But I did some logging in some other cars like Supergrams, which does. So that's what I'll do. I'll put that on Supergrams. Sweet. Next car, LS E30, absolute chunky bum. It is. It's what? Chunky. What's chunky bum? I don't know. Did you make that up? But it's not that clever. I'm just saying it's a chunky car. V8, rear-wheel drive, old-school 80s vibes, really nice inside, Evo seats, half cage. Um, just 
upgraded everything basically. An absolute blast to drive. Um, a, a drifts blast. like a chunky bum. It drifts pretty well, heat. yeah, yeah. I mean, we discovered a few issues here and there that we've been ironing out. But uh, one thing that's always annoyed me is the the, the dash has not been attached properly, so I got myself one of these, so we're gonna throw this in. So the original BMW dash um, basically never worked, even when it had the old broken engine. Um, and so we put the IC7 Haltech dash in so we could keep track of what was going on. It's also really easy because it's just one plug uh, and none of, nothing behind it actually works anyway. So what I've got is, it's actually like an adapter face that you can then put the dash into. It just makes it even neater because this has always been sort of flapping around and not very, not very neat, but it did the job. Um, so now I'm just going to remove the factory instrument cluster, insert that in and then put the dash on top of it. It should look pretty neat. With 3D printing exploding in popularity, car lovers are coming up with some excellent gear that just wasn't easy to make until now. This is basically an adapter that mounts the IC7 screen perfectly into the dash where the stock instrument cluster used to go. You can then wire up your blinkers and other warning lights so it will handle all the required functions. I reckon that weighs like three kilos. Massive. Where's it gonna go, Martin? In the bin. That's where it's gonna go. Uh, but look, someone, I think it's been, had one of those sticky things on it. I don't think that's a legit M dash. I don't think, I mean, look, correct me if I'm wrong. We're about to find out, Martin. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it is. VDO, made in Germany. Doesn't say what year. Um, anyway. Can you give it to me, Martin? This, don't put it in the bin. This replaces it, and it gets a nice pretty dash on there, and you can wire in your blinkers and stuff onto the dash so everything still works I'll as mine normal. before you, mate. So every mounting screw is broken back in here, so it should still work, but um, normally there'd be yeah, four or five different mounting screws. After repairing some crusty old 80s plastics, the dash is in and looks excellent. We'll show all the functions of the Haltech ECU in a variety of different screens. E30 done, absolutely awesome car, ready just to drive it and enjoy it. And skid it. Next car. Boom! Yes. STI, this here has got some white line lowered springs on it. It's got some mad wedge wheels. It's got Michelin Pilot Sport 4s on it. Lowered nicely. Cob intake. Stage one. A little Maxton design body kit mad thing. Mad exhaust. Sounds nice. It sounds great. Nice and wide and fat. Again, just a couple of little jobs that we wanted to do to this um, that have not been done yet. One of which is some black wheel nuts. Some mad little... JDM special ones and also a blow off valve for some more psh psh because my car goes in the bin? No, it goes psh psh. <laughs> my car goes psh psh. My car goes psh psh. All right, black wheel nuts are on. Way better than these little nuggety things. And now, time for the blow off valve. The GFB response is my favourite blow off valve of all time by far. It features a fully adjustable and variable bias venting system, which means you can go from fully recirculating to fully choo choo. They're designed and made in Australia, and GFB have been longtime supporters of the show. This is a particularly important upgrade if you're increasing your boost above what the factory valve can hold, and this GFB unit can hold unlimited boost pressure. Yes, unlimited. It's a fairly easy swap on the STI and a direct bolt on which you should be able to do in around 15 minutes. Blow off valve is in. Awesome. Let's have a listen. Sweet. Done. That's rad. There it is. Now. Very good. Are you ready for the next car, everybody? Here we go. Let's go. Oh, Martin. Th there's no words. It's nice, isn't it? It's a nice Dorito. 1982, Series 2, RX-7. Wanted one the entire time I've been interested in cars. I just loved them. And then I saw a blue one come up and it was just like, have to do it. Got to do it. Got to get in before they skyrocket. And skyrocket they did because I got this a little while ago. Just it's come nice, and have huh? a look inside it. Yeah, it's pretty nice. And just experience 
the Time Warp. It is so good. It smells great, smells sweet. Yeah. There's just something magical about it. And I can't wait to do a road trip with this in the 240Z. Yeah, I mean, it's been restored as well. You know, someone put a lot of effort into painting it and tidying it up and it's it's like 80% there. So there's still a few things to do. There's still bits missing, like one of the sun visors fell off, this fell off somewhere on the highway. Um, getting parts is really, really challenging for it, but I'm slowly getting that stuff together. So yeah, it's gonna be a good one, man. This is gonna That's be awesome. So good. Time for our next car. This is too sexy. This is a CE Lancer. Uh, it's had a big block engine swap and it started out its life as a white show car with a terrible hideous interior with a spider and a snake in it. Is that how you remember it? I'm eating this nut bar after all, because that snack pack was rubbish. <laughs> That's not a normal snack pack, is it? A They're normally meatier, greasier, that, sloppier. Because that one, had chips that were not cooked properly with minced meat on top squirted with sauce. Yeah. I, I, I don't, I'm, I, I'm looking forward to hearing from the people about what a legit snack pack is like. But too sexy. This is the car that was almost as good as my car, Twisted. Um, and, the um, legit Evo. Yeah, and it's had a lot of work done to it. It's now set up for the track. This is the fastest car that we have in the fleet on the track, isn't it? It was until Supergrams chopped it. But yes. this thing also died on the straight because mm. we, we think it blew a head gasket. Don't actually know. All I know is it gets really hot. Um, so this thing's just been parked up actually and something I've been meaning to get around to working on but it's quite a big job to fix it uh, because... It needs to go in the bin. Oh, it does need to go in the bin because this thing is like way faster than that Civic and it's um, it's just got semi-slick tyres on it. It's got a big front mount turbo and front mount intercooler on there, a banana manifold, a 2.4 litre out of a CH Lancer. Uh, it's got a lot of potential but also it's it's not road reg so you can't drive it on the road, you can't test it. So it's very much just in that track car life where it parks up to you take to the track and it blew it up at the track. But what I have done, love to show you, but I can't actually un open this door. I'll unlock that door for you, Martin. <laughs> so what I do have um, that is pretty cool that I've been squirreling away is the bits to fix it. How and the cool bits is to that, fix by it. the way? Look What's at that, that? Martin. That's, that's from our Mighty Car Mods pack of cards. It's the jack and that is too sexy. You can get them, I'll put a link down below. They're, they're normal cards, so you can play your normal games of strip poker or foot fetish or whatever it is that you do. But it's also just got cool images of all our cars. There's also um, some cool little touches in this car, like the gear knob is actually the first automotive gift I ever received. There's a gear knob, which is pretty cool. So it's a Subaru one, funnily enough, it doesn't fit my Subaru because it's a five-speed one. But this has a five-speed, so it fits the five-speed. I've got a bunch of parts to make this thing awesome. Um, things like cam gears, adjustable cam gears. Hello, does anyone remember Rodney? Where's Rodney? Let's go have a look. Rodney's over here. When I first blew this car up at the track, not the second time, the first time, this is what came out of it. So the guys at the skid factory went and pulled the engine apart and found that that's what I'd done to it. So I bent a rod. I think it's because I misshifted and put it in third when I meant to put it in fifth. Yeah. I think, but I don't actually know. It all happened so quick and the logs didn't really tell us anything. So, hello. Um, so that is on the cards for this engine because if we're going to replace the bits, um, might as well put some stronger stuff in there and it can handle it. Like it's got the turbo for it. It's got everything else, it's got the supporting mods. It just doesn't have the actual built engine. I haven't built an engine before myself, so I actually don't know how to do it. So I'm going to get some help, enlist some help and get that done. But for today, what Today, I let's do, be honest, Martin. We're pulling out stuff from this and sticking it in cars we like more. In cars that are a bit more generally useful. Because like this more. is track. I love this car. That you like the other more. This install was in my S15 and this was our How to Install Recaro episode that we did a long time ago. This seat has done the rounds, hasn't it? This is, it's the Cheryl of the car seat world. It's been all over the place. We and actually had many got, sweaty buttocks riding on it. We actually got a tour of the Recaro factory, which was awesome years and years ago. And this is a set of Recaros that we ended up with for your S15. I can't undo them, they need a bigger spanner. Um, and so they ended up in too sexy because it just needed a seat for it because it only had the stock yes. ones. But, but when we did our Subaru battle recently, you were falling out of Supergrams. I was falling out of Supergrams, so I thought I might transplant these awesome Recaros. The other second one is around somewhere into Supergrams, which I got some rails for, from uh, for that particular Liberty, so it'll bolt straight on. And this is gonna be better with some fixed back stuff. Yeah. The other option for this car is to pull all the cage out, put it completely back to stock and drive it on the Throw road. Throw it in the bin. 
Oh, I mean, drive it on throw the it road. in the bin. It's not a Honda, dude. Okay. Um, that's the other option, but it's got a full cage, which is pretty cool for track. So it's in that weird in between where too much for road, but is it track ready? No, because it needs more engine, because it needs this and that. So that's where Two Sexy's been for anyone who's wondering, is people do ask about it. It is an awesome car. Start the key. It starts every single time. It works great, uh, except for the fact that it also has a. Put Let's pull the seats together. out and put them in a car that you like more. Let's put a milk crate in it for now. Seats that you don't fall out of are essential on track cars, especially if your tyres actually stick well, because the inertia goes up the chain of command until you're getting thrown out of your seat and your track times suffer. This car's been to a few meets, and hey Marty and Moog, thank you for the videos, Julian and Jess. Thanks Julian and Victoria. Jess. Cool, that must have been when we went to Winton. Dear Marty, thank you for last night. I'm the promo girl with the brown. Just don't want to tear it on the, lift it up over there. There, yep. My new race seat. We're moving it around. Let's go. All right, Martin, are you ready for blast off, mate? Now we're talking. I love this car. Super Grams, we both like this one. I do love this car. Even though I'm about to beat it with my STI. Yeah, right, awesome. bro. What? Yeah, right. Um, Anyways. This is Super Grams EZ36 powered six cylinder. One of our most um, beloved vehicles. And it's my a vehicles. It was never build. intended to be that way. I just like Subaru wagons that have had them for a long time. And uh, this just ended up being the best combination with an interesting engine swap. A lot of people have now done this engine swap actually over the years since. Now one of the biggest make or break issues with any car, can you guess what it is? Do you have Did any... you say ifus? What? Did you say ifus or issues? Make or break issues. Did I thought did you I said the make or break ifus. Maybe I did. Ifus. Anyway, the make or break ifus. What's, what? what's the biggest make or break with a car for you? When you buy it, you either love it or hate it. What is it for you? Uh, it's, well, it's whether it makes you feel seasick when you drive it. That's a big one. Yes. Yep. Anything yep. else? Uh, who's in the passenger seat? Well, that too. Has a bit to do with it. Yep. Do you know what it is for me? Smell. Smell. New car smell. Some new car smells good. I don't know because I haven't really bought new cars or spent much time in them. But this car absolutely reeks and it only smells since I upgraded the seats last time. Really? Um, so I got some seats that say STI on them because I thought that would be cool. Yeah, oh, they smell. It smells like mm -hmm. a combination of steroid, yep. sweat, yep. Red Bull, yes, energy drinks, and vapey weird stuff. It's exactly what it That's smells great, like. Man. It does my head in, and every time I get in the car, it's like it's not. It, it just, it just really smells. So whoever owned the seats before, I think they were just like an enthusiast, or they literally spilt their candle, like candle wax business making stuff like in the seat when they and were transporting they, they it. And they spilt their guts onto it. Well, that's very possible too. The other thing is these seats are really unsupportive, even compared to the ones I took out. So sometimes you do a mod and then you regret it and you shouldn't have done it. But I already sold the old seats before, um, before I had a chance to put them back in. I what just are these they from cool. again? These are from the Tune by STI, top of the line, best one they ever made STI things. Right. They're worth decent money, but and they're electric, so which is cool as well, but um, they smell. So they're going away, and also this car is going a little bit more uh, towards being able to be used on the track because it just works really well on yep. the track. Uh, so and I'd like to do a bit more of that. Um, so put the Recaros in and just flip them between cars as required. I've got some rails for it, actually. That, oh, they're um, good. So it should bolt them straight Easy on. Easy and fun. So let's rip these out. In the bin they go and put the Recaros in. Did you know this This is true? I'm spitting facts at you. Not wasting no time. We're rocking with the slime, removing the STI seats. We're going to be slamming you with sick beats from down under. Australia, lift up your belly. Show us your... Show us your what? I don't know. That was a good rhyme. Anyway, this is true. Spitting facts at you. Street level. Oh God, no, not street level. <laughs> Martin and I. No street level. Martin's talking about new car smell. We wouldn't know. Never had a new car, ever. Yes, too, I was pretty new. Martin's never had a new car, ever. Dude, so when, when someone else has squirted a year or two of anal gas into it, it's not new anymore. It's not new anymore, is, is it? it? But, and you've never had a new car. I don't think I've so. I've never had a new car. I am pledging right now, within the next six months, uh, what's that noise? That was the beep of doubt. We, within the next six months, I am guaranteeing you all the people right now 
I'm gonna buy. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> it's, it's the beep of doubt, dude. I'm going to buy. Yeah, go. Okay. Spit it I'm out. I'm legit going to Street buy, level. in the next six months, I'm going to buy a brand new vehicle. <laughs> it's true. I don't know what it is. I'm just telling you, I'm, I'm going to experience it. I'm going to experience it, man. I'm going to buy a brand new vehicle. What have you done with him? And with that... I'm not talking like it's a demonstrator that's done 2,000 Ks. I'm talking it's done like 4 Ks or less. Can I just say what everyone's vehicle. thinking? No. I don't care what everyone's thinking. That's what they're thinking. Uh, I'm going to go and get the other Recaro seat Please from downstairs. Do. I'll be back in a minute. <laughs> yes. All that's right. Actually, you haven't, got, go, you haven't got the underglow. All right, here is my genuine Recaro seat rails for a Subaru BLBP. That's left and that is right. It looks like the right one's got like a jacky uppy thing on it. Not sure what the go is there. Maybe I can delete that, maybe you can't. Uh, but either way, that will bolt up perfectly to our Recaro seat. So I'm gonna slap them on, slap them in the car, job done. Lots of modern cars have airbags in the seats, so it's not a good idea to replace them on a street only car. In that case, it's often better to find seats from a higher spec model with the same standard of safety equipment. But everything changes when you start introducing roll cages and safety harnesses to the equation. The highly recommended if you're doing lots of track days is a fire extinguisher that's within easy reach of your person while you're driving. Uh, a really easy one to do is down here, you can put on a bracket. It doesn't really get in the way even when you've got a passenger. Um, so that's a good idea. The other thing with seats is bolt them in loosely first, don't drive one down and then try and do the other side because it'll always move around. There's always a bit of flex, uh, but this is looking really good so far. It rolls forward, it even fits over the fire extinguisher at full reach. It winds down and we bolt it in at the back. The other bonus of this is weight reduction. We've saved almost 10 kilos per seat. I looked at some live auctions in Japan the other yeah. day. Uh, and um, so R34, like nice R34s, yeah. you know, when we were looking at them, they were 40, 50 grand. Yes. And then before I got my 240s out, I wanted to bid on one that went up to 80. And I only wanted to spend like 50 or 60. And I was like, man, it's gone crazy. So at auction in Japan, before yeah. you get it to your country, um, I, did the, uh, I did the kind of the calculations on them. They're going for around 200 in Japan. That's, That's before you get them to your country, before you got yeah. your your duties or your on the road. So we're talking now like a stinking old this and we're talking about it being a quarter of a million dollars. And, and that's the thing, is this a good thing or a bad thing? Some people would say it's a good thing because they got, they got one and now they've got it and they're sitting on all this value and they can do something with that money. But see, that's what I think. What are you going to do with it? If you're not doing anything with the car and it's sitting there and just appreciating in value, are you going to do something with the money with like, Where's it going? Yeah, I don't know, but I, what I do know is parts are expensive and harder to find, which means fixing those cars has also been difficult. Finding parts for a two-door STI, good luck. Yeah, yeah. And any, everything that you do find has mad tax on it. So Man, these are, that's where that's where cars like this still come into their own because they're still common. Um, it's and really some fast. cars are still cheap. You can find old minis. They're normally shagged, but you can still find them yeah. for like three or four grand. Um, these haven't changed in price, and that's how you know that they're not collectible or desirable, particularly yeah. because they're not changing. Yeah. And you know, I don't really like saying it, but. BRZs and 86s, oh, yeah. they're still cheap, they're they still are. a thing. I know I was like a naysayer for ages. Me too. Just journalist car, whatever. They're really fun, they're mm. cheap, they're easy to work on, there's heaps of parts, there's lots of uh, community around them. Yep. Um, but yeah, I mean, these, these they're kind of interesting questions to pose, similar to houses, right? That's you know, right. like people buy a house for 500 grand or whatever in Sydney. Uh, 10 or 15 years ago. Now that house is what, two or three million dollars? Easily. It's like, how do young people get a place? There are also other cars in Japan that you can look at if, if you've been priced out the market of GTRs and all the hero cars from the 90s. Go a little bit newer. There's like, you know, 1JZ and 2JZ Toyota four door saloons that look like Camrys but are actually yep. rear wheel drive. You can manual swap them pretty easily. You IS can have 200s. a lot of fun. Yeah, IS200s are probably the hot source. There's, there's a lot of other cars you can have fun with. Subaru have been making stuff the whole time. Some of it's boring, some of it's cool. Um, you know, the STI is an awesome car. So anyway, we digress, but that's the way it is at the moment. We, we're dealing with, you know, a car like this that's not as 
desirable, but I think it's awesome. Ticks lots of boxes for me, so let's slap Let's put the in. seat in, Martin, then bring in the next vehicles. Excellent. Changing seats is an excellent upgrade. Just make sure you check with your local regulations and also your race rules, depending on the kind of driving you're doing. We've got a whole video on it, which you can check out on our channel. Oh, yes. That is awesome. Love it. Could probably go lower. This is like an adjustable rail for height, maybe for like shorter people. But I'll either adjust it down if I can, or take the adjusty system off it. But either, I mean, either way, that's about where the factory one was sitting anyway. So I'm comfortable, I'm bolstered, and we are pumping through these vehicles, man. Martin, hold on, because I'm about to fap you off with a clap. 240Z! Oh, whoa, I've become Marty. Meanwhile, we're also gonna fix up this mad moto compo. And check it out. This one comes with a snake from Too Sexy. Can, Can I, have I have my, my voice, voice back? back? Oh, that's better. So this here is my 240Z or S30 that I found in Japan. And this one here is powered with a RB26 from a Skyline GTR. So there it is. This is one of those other cars like the Mini that is just a forever car. Absolutely love it. It's amazing. Makes heaps of power. I think 330 kilowatts at the wheels. You might be wondering why is this little piece missing? Well, it's not missing. It's just here and it recently had to be removed because I had to color match it for something. You're gonna find out about that soon. It's probably, it's probably the biggest news we've had in years. Not even joking, the biggest news we've had in years. Would you say, Martin? Absolutely. It's huge. For sure. Anyway, one thing that has always tickled my goat stick about this car is this here. So the car is awesome, it's in beautiful condition, we've done all sorts of great stuff to it, but this here has always just been a little, I mean, that's got a little bit of sticky tape holding it on. I don't know what you call these things exactly, but you can still get them new, which I did, from Japan. This here is a over-rider assembly, and I do believe that if I take this out, hopefully it's actually the right part, that, look at that, can replace from there to there. Look at that, so that is my little job today on the 240Z S30, take these off, replace them with that. Let's get to it. I'm working on our other JDM super vehicle that can fit in the boot of just about every other car we've shown today, except for the 240. It's a 1981 Motor Compo two-stroke folding motorbike. Absolutely excellent, all 50 cc's of it. All it needs is a service with some new oil and it's ready for more cruising around meets and car parks because it's illegal to ride it just about everywhere else. It's been a little bit hard to start lately, so I'm going to strip the plastics off to remove the spark plug and the air filter. There's the problem, the air filter has just disintegrated, so I don't even know if you can buy them anymore. I have to find out. Now, I'm glad that I took this off because this here is kind of what is keeping you safe in an old car. And this one here, look at this, Martin. What? It's legit. This here is what's holding the bumper on. What? Just really? a few twists of that. No tool required. Wow. I'm gonna get rid of these. I'm gonna WD-40 them. I'm gonna give the whole thing a little bit of a little polish. Sweet. Then stick it back on and then move on to the next vehicle, Martin. So these are just some little uh, eight mils that are um, holding on those trims. Oh, well, that's cool, they just come off. And oh. Martin. Oh, yes. Hey. There it is, you're literally spraying that part. There it is, that, that is this actual 240Z as drawn by Justami um, on that's the so uh, cool. Mighty Carmel's WD-40 can. And there's the car and there's the thing. That's just, that's freaking cool. Now, while we're talking about the JDMness, we've talked about these before, these are our favorite little tools. And you get these from places like Yellow Hat and Autobacks and stuff in Japan. And they're just these mad little sockets that can go click and go into your ratcheting kind of... Um, Whizzer. Whizzers. I don't so know here. where one is. See, oh, there's got one. A, got a 10 mil on it already. I'm gonna show everybody this one. So normally, oh, you got a, you got a little JDM one in there as well. And so the, in Japan, these here have a much longer dongle. That dongle kind of comes out to about there, so they don't fit in our tools. But if you just get an angle grinder or a hacksaw or something and you cut it down, then look at that. 
Now you're whizzing with mad JDM tools, which is, uh, which is excellent. I'll give that back to you, Martin. Oh, you get, you're making your own air filter over there. I think I'm going to have to. I don't oh, think dude, I have a that's choice. That's freaking awesome. All right, so let's get this little whizzer on there, on the whizzer. All right, let's get these going. Oh. It'll either undo or it'll snap. There we go, that is off. Now I should be able to peel that off. Look at that. There it is. Got one of them snapped, but the other one's okay. Um, there it is. I'm going to move on to the other side. This is my Moto Compo air filter housing. I went to buy a new one, um, currently unavailable. So maybe they are out there somewhere in the world. What I do have is a Honda CRF 250. What Sorry. Is it? What is it? What are you drinking? That's kale and celery. That's. F oh. Really? Anyway, this is off a Sarah F250 um, air filter. I'm just going to make it work because it's just a little panel. So I'm just going to put it on there and just cut it out. And um, then I'll have a proper motorbike air filter for my motor compo. If you all talk, you get left in the rear view Waiting for that new mood to drop Here's a preview You say you be everywhere, but we don't ever see you Everything I was was the first, it's the sequel They ain't ready Turn the speakers up and slamming again Your favorite rap band producer reconnected this year Ain't no slowing us down High speed when we pass by So when you hear that beat drop Please put them hands high We live fast and die young Better make your count The goal is to make change in the world and my bank account I mean in large amounts my daughter gotta eat too and I'm tired of slaving for rich people This is an NCZ50 Moto Compo. We bought two of these things um, a couple years back. They were about two grand at the time, reasonably cheap for what they were. Now they cost almost $7,000 in working order because they're just rare now. Uh, this came out in the early 80s as uh, an accessory to the Honda City, uh, which had a cutout in the boot perfectly made for this. So it's called a trunk bike. It's foldable, these fold down. Um, if you're interested, there's a couple of videos we made about it, including racing the Zuma, which was a whole lot of fun. It's two stroke, 50 cc. Uh, really, really basic. Um, this is a manual that uh, Benny Mechanical Stig actually got remade, which is awesome for servicing it, which is all I'm really doing at the moment. These can be a little bit tricky to start, but with basic uh, small engine service, so a spark plug, an oil change, uh, clean the oil strainer, clean the fuel strainer, make sure it's got fresh fuel. It's also got a separate oil tank and it automatically mixes the oil with the fuel for the two-stroke mixture. Um, runs a six-volt power system and a lot of fun. I mean, it gets up to about 30 k's an hour, so you wouldn't really want to ride it on the road, even though in Japan you can and it's got all the blinkers and stuff to be road regoed. So it's pretty old school, that kind of reservoir style two stroke where yeah. you tip a little bit in and then it kind of mixes it up. But um, they are kind of, you know, I guess they're kind of fun bikes for what they are. They are really expensive, but I think, you know, design wise for those that are into kind of that aesthetic, these came out at a time when transformers and things like that were really popular as well. And you can tell that that inspired the look of these. Certainly when it's got all its fairing on, it definitely looks like it's a Megatron-y looking and thing. You there's know? so much going on. I mean, you've got suspension front and rear, you've got that automatic oiling system, you've got a fuel gauge, uh, choke, electronic stuff, you know, a, a, a meter to tell you how much oil if that reservoir is getting low. And you've got to make it fit yeah. within, what, what? it's probably one meter long. And how much does the thing weigh? Like it weighs 30, like 35 kilos, 40 nothing. kilos. It's so light. Yeah. So um, yeah, a really interesting little machine anyway. So the air filter's stuffed, so we'll fix that, um, put some new oil in it, try and get it started. It may or may not start. Two strokes, these particular are a bit finicky. If you're riding them every day, they're fine. But I mean, who's really riding their Moto Compo every day, especially if you can't ride on the road? Not me. But I do love this thing. So um, we'll see how we go, see if we can get it running once more. Everything on the Moto Compo has been fixed up and cleaned. Now we just have to see if it will start. It's just teasing me. Yeah! Now leave the choke up, leave the choke up. Now wind it on. Wind it on. Smoke show. 
Well, it works. I'm going to put it back together. <laughs> <laughs> One thing I always think about with vehicles like this is that have you ever been to a car show or one of those like farm shows and you see old dudes standing around with their stationary engines? Now, yeah. Like, this stationary engine used to run the pump up at Warragamba Dam in 1929 and you, I mean, you know, you look at it and go, hey, that's pretty cool. It's a stationary engine from a long time ago. But would you go and go, would you know if that stationary engine was somehow fancier than the one next to it from four years later that was suddenly worth more or less value and would you buy it? Uh, I wouldn't know, Martin, no. Well, I always think that like potentially that's what a moto compo, like one day that's what it's going to be. Like a bunch of old dudes standing around looking at a moto compo going, oh, this is from the 80s. Yeah. In like, nine, in like 2065, which is the equivalent, really. Think about these things. I'm, I'm thinking about it also, Martin. It's very interesting. <laughs> it really is. No, it is. I'm interested. Okay, Moto Compo's done, and it's done a skid, and that, <laughs> look how much better that is. Looks it's great. funny, today was all about getting those little things that are just twiggling your ziggy stick yep. and just getting them done and gone, and yep. that there is so much better. Love it. Love it. All right, we ready for the next one? Ready for the next Let's one, Martin. Let's do this. Here we go. <laughs> you all right, mate? Yep. <laughs> Here is my two-door Subaru STI. Um, it was a dream car to get for a long time. I took it to the racetrack and it blew it up. Um, Subaru engines do that sometimes. It's got a, um, it's spun a rod bearing most likely, which is what always happens. Uh, so I've been looking at engine options for this. You can just slap a new bear block in it, although they did stop making them. So I had some plans about how what I was gonna do with this to rebuild it to make it better, but it's a bit more time consuming, a bit harder to um, get happening, but that's sort of underway. The rest Let's of the talk about the Gemini, awesome. Martin. But this, the is the Gemini. One, this is the one that, uh, that is probably the most um, asked about project that we've come across so far since we revealed it a couple of years ago. This we bought in Japan. Um, I got it really, really cheap at an auction because the auction was kind of like listed improperly. Martin, can so I, I blow got cheap. mines? Yeah. Can I blow their mines for a second? Yeah. We bought the Gemini the same trip we bought the 240Z. Did we? Super turbo. We bought the Gemini the same trip that we picked up the super turbo. We did. We yes. bought this when we did Turbos and Temples 2. Yeah, which was a super turbo. Yes. That's right. Uh, and so we took this, to the, took this out to a forest near Rob's place and got some shots of it and drove it around. But it was very broken, didn't work. So the reason that this is taking a bit longer is this is a proper car that I'll have for a long time. It's one that I want to do right. It's one that needs a bit more love and attention with the body. It's also like 40 years old or something. And so... It's, Nothing wrong with that, mate. It's, <laughs> it's going to need a bit more love. It's going to need some rust repairs and some other work. I think it usually originally was yellow and someone's done a kind of an average repaint. The so interior though, Martin, the is interior bullish is just bellissimo it is so nice and just ready waiting which is why it's in storage indoors just so that it doesn't um degrade anymore but the car itself is good so um things are progressing with that what i do have for this car the news for this is i do have a drive line a pallet arrived recently with an engine a gearbox and some other fun bits on it so i've worked out what the plan is just got to kick it off just got to find space to make it happen and yep. get it done next year it'll be next year yeah but there's exciting exciting things happen you might have seen before that there was a panel missing from the 240Z. There is also a fuel door. door missing from this STI. And if you looked really closely, you would have noticed something missing from... The posty bike also had something missing. That's all I'm going to say. Speaking of old nuggets that need a lot of work, people, it's time to show you another one. Check this out. This 
is the other Nissan that we love so very much. This is the Nissan March Super Turbo. It was part of Turbos and Temples 2. My good friend there bought it for me in Japan. We went over and picked it up out of a car park. It was just a very, very awesome experience. Drove it through Mount Fuji, went to a Nismo festival, just had an amazing time. And then we brought it home. Since then, we've put uh, new wheels on it, custom made three-piece wheels. Uh, we've also put uh, new tires, cleaned it up, done a bit of work to it, new suspension. Um, and this pretty much where it's sat since then. I'm planning to do a bit of uh, ECU fiddling on this. Now, if you watched the K-Trike video, you would have seen how long that took and how much work that was. This will be even more hardcore. But I also have a few extra little parts that have just arrived from overseas. Like I've got a new dump pipe, which I'm pretty excited to put on. Look how cute it is. So that's gonna go on very soon. I've also got some performance parts that are going on the Jimny and some more off-roading stuff because Breaker Breaker Mighty Car Mods is the best four-wheel driving channel on YouTube. <laughs> it's true. Breaker Breaker. It's by far Breaker, the best Breaker. Nissan March Super Turbo show on YouTube. So the Nissan March Super Turbo, I'm pretty excited to get my teeth sunk into a little bit more work with this car. Um, it is one of my favorites. I managed to find this dump pipe, I, th I think it was from Scotland of all places. So um, yeah, slowly acquiring bits for it. Do a bit of ECU stuff on it. The car is really nice to just sort of drive in daily anyway. We do have just a few more projects that we're gonna tell you about. Here we go. So, um, and you might be wondering as well, like why do you keep them? Well, some of them are just too awesome no too, and they that. too, no too many stories, like they do. Like the Mira, why, what do you, why do you use so many cars? How do you get a chance to drive them? Well, you don't all the time, uh, but like, you know, the Mira is particularly for me is a really special one, cutting it in half, bringing it here, putting it back together, obviously picking up the Super Turbo. Supergram's been with us for so long now and just being such a winner of a car. And there's some, there's some that will go. They're not all gonna stay forever, of course, but they're not all finished yet. They're not just collections of glass and rubber and metal and fluids, they have slowly transmogrified and transformed into rolling, working, thunderous pieces of art. Fun. Well, yeah. <laughs> so thank you for watching. We had a lot of fun. A doing, we had a lot of fun doing all the uh, just the small little mods on those cars to incrementally make them better. And this stuff is happening all the time. But you know, as like with the Jimny, there's just too much um, to not do a whole episode about some of the mods that we're doing on that car, plus some others that you haven't seen yet that I'm very excited to show you, but we haven't included them in this video, such as the new. Yes. Yeah. Yep. All right, Martin, watch this. Is something supposed to happen? No. Ah.